uh, superficially very different but actually quite related um, set of problems that need the um, knowledge and science to 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 create a um, um, satisfactory rational uh, policy is fisheries in general um, people um, extract and mostly eat from freshwater bodies from lakes from rivers and of course from the ocean uh, a large number of um, species of um, of fishes or other taxonomic groups that are used for for a source of protein. Uh, these are again very much um, requiring the knowledge, the scientific knowledge, or the or the or the or the traditional knowledge to be able to manage properly. Um, the amount of uh, species that are being depleted by by over exploitation is huge mostly in the northern uh, hemisphere of the of the planet and uh, the curious thing is that a lot of that is supposedly backed by scientific knowledge that knowledge has been clearly insufficient and in in, in some sense um, in some sense uh, mistaken and uh, we still need to learn more about how complex ecosystems work before we are in a position to, to make full use of them in a rational way. Uh, but uh, fisheries is, is another area where we need to know more about um, the workings, the species involved, and their population dynamics in order to be able to do um, exploitation of those resources in a, in a sensible, rational and sustainable way. Forestry and fisheries, everybody knows about it. But there are other things which are less obvious and perhaps not less important. One of them is um, pollinate, pollination. There are many species, thousands of species, all over the world that pollinate plants that are important for humans. Uh, there are plants that are important for agricultural purposes, for, for there are plants that are important as timber products and um, others, and that require the services of those little insects uh, or bats or um, mostly bats and, and, and insects that carry the pollen from the male to the to the female. Without them uh, we wouldn't have a large number of uh, species. Uh, one that comes to my mind because it's one which is important in Mexico it's uh, mezcal. Mezcal is and tequila is an example of mezcal. Mezcal is are the, the alcohols produced from the agaves, the genus agave and related genera in, in, in Mexico. Uh, a lot of these are pollinated by bats. If you don't have the bats, the agaves stop being um, uh, fec fecunded and therefore the cycle is interrupted. Some of these agaves are capable of, re of reproducing vegetatively uh, without pollination. But to have genetic variety and, and sustainable healthy populations, you need to have bats. Bats of the <coughs> family Glossophagini, which are smallish bats that, uh, when they when they are when they are captured after um, a night visiting the agaves, they are all sticky because of the nectar of the agave and covered with pollen all over. They look like um, spoiled kids after having eaten, or not well educated kids after having eaten uh, some uh, bread and jam. But anyway, uh, there are thousands of species. And uh, we need also to know what species are those, where can they be found, what are the sizes of the populations, are they really pollinators or are they just visitors of the, of the, of the plants. These are questions that oftentimes we don't know. And this is one of these areas where native knowledge tends to be 
very very invaluable because many uh, of the of the local people that live in in direct contact with nature are perfectly capable of answering questions that sometimes the scientists would spend years researching. Uh, I have seen that specific situation in 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 a, in, a, in a forest in Quintana Roo in Mexico, where the the Maya uh, peasants knew very well what was the role of a big Hilocopa uh, bee in pollinating certain trees. They knew it. They knew it perfectly well without having without the need of performing experiments just because they have been there around forever and they observed it perhaps their parents or their grandparents raised the point to them uh, whatever but um, uh, a thing that for a scientist may require uh, a, a long time of setting up experiments if you if you are capable of communicating with the local people uh, they may be able perhaps not always but oftentimes to give you very valuable information about this sort of thing. So pollinators, it's another area where biodiversity uh, knowledge is required in order to establish um, good decision making at all levels. Another example of um, species or groups of species that are important for humans um, are those that are used for um, uh, for hunting purposes. Uh, this can be done in many ways. One is sport hunting, the kind of sport hunting that is done mostly by wealthy people in the in the developed uh, countries, and also, of course, the hunting that is done at uh, local levels in the developing world for the purpose of supplementing uh, one's or one's family's um, uh, diet by uh, getting bush meat. This is a very important area and in the developed countries and increasingly in the developing countries as well and of course one excellent example is Kenya uh, um, the, the kind of hunting that is done for sport it's a very important uh, asset for the country and can be um, used to to produce sustainable management and to benefit local communities this is something which sometimes is counterintuitive and there are many people that are opposed to hunting on not on ecological grounds, not on the grounds that species are going to be depleted and populations are going to go extinct disappear but on the grounds of human um, human humane humane uh, considerations uh, pain inflicted to intelligent species things like that I see that point I think it's an important point I don't think we can just disregard those are sentimentality or or things which are um, just the concerns of dwellers of the cities rather than people that actually live in the fields uh, we have to take that into account but on the other hand it's absolutely uh, undeniable that uh, well-organized hunting performed properly um, taking into account again the knowledge the science the the information about population sizes uh, how sensitive is the entire population to culling of the different age groups um, whether you can kill just the old uh, males or the post-reproductive specimens or what's the effect of killing a male or a female depending on many 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 uh, complicating um, circumstances that information can inform very successful management again I will be presenting later uh, examples from my own country uh, which are really astonishing on how uh, a well-informed um, hunting um, policy for certain species can provide huge benefits for the local communities as well as for the national government. This is one of the most interesting uh, and promising areas uh, unfortunately as I said not very well understood 
and there are powerful enemies to, to the activity of hunting as such. Finally, I would like to talk about uh, those um, species that are not beneficial, but rather they, they create problems for, for humans, uh, like, for instance, um, vectors of diseases, pests of, uh, of agricultural uh, products, um, invasive species in general that can do all sorts of damage, like clogging uh, pipes or, or uh, eradicating um, or affecting entire ecosystems in the countries that are invaded by these alien species. Uh, this is a, a huge problem in many countries, and, uh, and dealing with that uh, problem requires um, a very extensive uh, database of knowledge. It's not just, uh, in these cases, in the case of invasive species, it's seldom that you can resort to, to local knowledge because oftentimes these are species that come from places far away that are a novelty for the local people and it takes time to develop the, the awareness, the knowledge, the experience to deal with this kind of species. So these are a very always there have been invasive species because uh, there are many ways that a species can move from an, an original area of distribution to another uh, uh, but uh, modern modern life and modern commerce has enhanced the movements of species from one place to another horribly terribly um, well really very significantly and therefore, this is now one of the problems of our of our age. Uh, it's it's what it's doing is homogenizing the world. It's it's uh, creating um, large distributions, uh, in enhancing the size, increasing the size of distributions of species that used to be very uh, narrowly, uh, with very narrow ranges, or could be with very narrow ranges. Uh, we need knowledge and science in order to take the right decisions about these things. For instance, beginning with the obvious thing, don't bring species that you don't know much about into your country. Uh, this seems to be such an, such an obvious thing, but uh, it isn't such an obvious thing um, because people don't... we are not capable of predicting what is going to happen with the species that moves into the country. Um, sometimes there is no harm, many times there is no harm, and sometimes, and there is like a rule, 10% of the times, it's a disaster. And disasters of major proportions, for instance, the disaster uh, that Cactoblastis cactorum, the cactus moth, created. Uh, Cactoblastis was the solution. The disaster that the cacti created in Australia when they were introduced there to produce uh, cochineal uh, red, the, 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 the colorant that was used to, to paint the coats of the red coats, the army of the British, was uh, painted with a colorant, with a tincture that came from an insect, and that insect grows on cacti from Latin America. So the British said, OK, we have this large piece of uh, basically uh, dry or semi-desertic environment, which is Australia. Let's access the genetic resources and move both plant and uh, insect to Australia. They did that. And the result was that Australia was invaded, but invaded to a huge extent. Hundreds of thousands of square kilometers were invaded with cacti. South Africa too, uh, and uh, in order to to solve this problem of an invasive species, which was self-created because the British moved the cacti into Australia on purpose, then they had to move uh, a, pla uh, a pest of that. We, uh, it took uh, more than a century to find the right the right way of controlling um, the cacti, and this is a moth, Cactoblastis cactorum. Um, now, Cactoblastis is uh, reaching other parts of the world where it shouldn't be, and it's becoming an invasive in the desert of North America, which it should never have been there, and it was moved by the garden, the ornamental plants industry. So you see how 
these things uh, can be, uh, from the perspective of one region of the world, a benefit um, or, or a pro non-existent problem, and the same species in another country can become a major pest, and the agent that was used to control that pest can be also a pest elsewhere. So it's a very complicated thing, and the more knowledge we have about it, the best, the better. Uh, we need to, to be very well informed about these things. Uh, again, an area which is strictly related to biodiversity, but where the aim is not to, to prevent a species from being extirpated or disappearing. The aim is to prevent the species to getting into our area. A related case are those that are already there and uh, that, that, that should uh, that there are very very inconvenient from human perspectives like for instance vectors of diseases mosquitoes uh, bugs that transmit uh, uh, parasites of our body uh, species that create diseases for us those should be managed and management in some cases may mean eradication uh, I have no qualms whatsoever about eradicating, for instance, mosquitoes from a particular uh, area where they are bringing malaria or dengue or some hemorrhagic fever or, I mean, any infective diseases. Um, some people may be sort of morally or ethically concerned about that, but not, not me. I, I, am, I am a human being, I can't be but anthropocentric. Uh, it's impossible, ontologically impossible, to have another point of view. Uh, and although we have, the, uh, mean, that means that we have to be respectful and enlightened and uh, careful about how we treat other species. There are some species that really can create so so much pain and so much. Uh, havoc in human societies that we need to deal with them uh, we shouldn't allow them to be near us and some of them are vectors of diseases in order to do proper and intelligent management of the species you need knowledge you need to be able to inform the decision uh, takers about whether there are for instance alternatives to widespread spraying with with horrible venoms like DDT. I mean, DDT kills, no doubt, mosquitoes kills also many other things as well. And we need to find ways of dealing with the mosquitoes without creating um, havoc with other ecosystems. This is very, very um, serious and, 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 and an excellent example of how, of why we need to have good knowledge in order to to influence to 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 inform um, uh, a policy which makes sense not just from one narrow perspective but from a wide variety of perspectives um, some of the best examples of biodiversity knowledge applied to policy can be found in the areas of invasive species and management of DC, uh, vectors of diseases. And I will mention um, one example later in this uh, series of, of presentations. During this morning, I have used the term many species uh, many times. And some of you may be wondering whether are there really that many or how do we know? Well, I can't give you numbers for the entire world, but I can give you numbers for Mexico. And um, to my you know, to my right, there are a number of uh, figures that uh, CONAVIO, which is the Commission of Biological Diversity of Mexico, compiled for, um, for a long period of time. Uh, some of them are uh, also well, it's not just the names or the numbers. Uh, there are uh, very large uh, volumes of information, for instance, about medicinal plants. The medicinal plants of Mexico, uh, there, 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 there is a, an encyclopedia of medicinal plants of Mexico. Um, there are web pages for the medicinal plants of Mexico. Um, there are 
all kinds of papers published. There are databases about the, the, the chemical compounds inside them, and so on. It's, it's very extensive. Um, the same thing with, with, the, with the fishery species. There is a thing called a national fisheries chart, which is a, a compendium of the information about the species that are used for in the fishery industry in Mexico, and so on. So it's really thousands and thousands of species in mega diverse countries. Uh, the need to have the right knowledge, the right sets of tools to, to take intelligent decisions in countries with, with high biodiversity is, is dire, is very, very acute. Um, this is what we want to talk about in the remaining uh, lectures of, of, this, um, of this series. How do we mobilize that set of information that is available, or rather the sets of information, the kinds of information, all the way into changing policy. Uh, in the next uh, talk I'm going to talk about what policy may mean for us scientists trying to affect it. Uh, thank you.